What's up, everyone? My name is Jeff, and welcome back to my channel. We just gotta create a branch and get on with it. Today, we're gonna start a series on everyone's favorite C++ topic, CMake. The goal with this series is to provide tips and tricks so you and I can be more effective with CMake in our projects. Now, is CMake perfect? Absolutely not. However, a solid foundation in CMake fundamentals can easily turn CMake into a tool that works for you and not against you. I think most people get frustrated at tools when they sink unforeseen amounts of time into getting something done that should be easy or in debugging someone else's poor code. My hope is that watching this series will help you navigate your own usage of CMake, and when you come across CMake in the wild, make good decisions about how to improve it. Now, in this video, we're going to take a look at very minimal examples so we can talk through how CMake likes to structure things when building C and C++ code. My goal is that the next few videos will focus on CMake fundamentals, then we'll build on in future videos when we do more sophisticated things like super builds and custom commands. So enough with the intro already. Let's go look at some code. So what I've got set up here as an example is a little Hello World program. Uh, we can actually let's just have a look at it. It's all it is. It's a good old printf hello world. So it's just placeholder C++ because we're going to talk about the build system, not talk about C++. So you have a little program. Um, it's pretty simple. The next question is, how do I how do I build it? There's the command line. There's uh, like like manually invoking GCC or your compiler. If you're on Windows, create a Visual Studio project. Um, you could use something like Make or Ninja. And there's just so many options. But CMake gives us the ability to do pretty much all of the above without having to only program for one. Because CMake, if you don't know, generates build system files. So you write your CMake once, then it'll create build system scripts uh, to be invoked on your native platform, um, depending on how you configured CMake. So the first thing we gotta do is create a CMake list.txt, but to streamline things, I already have this open in VS Code, so I'm gonna go ahead and and do that and move over here. We're gonna create ourselves a CMake list.txt. And there's basically three ingredients we need. We need a CMake minimum required to say what version of CMake that um, we require for this CMake list to effectively work. Uh, this is not necessarily saying you can't be on your local machine using a newer version of CMake and um, accidentally make an incompatibility, but if a older version of CMake is run on the CMake list, this line will say, hey, that's illegal. I'm choosing 3.1 here. At the time of recording us, 3.17, I think is the latest release. I highly recommend you go with as new as you can. Um, but I'm just gonna say 3.1 just for the sake of, of today, because why not? Uh, the next thing, we're gonna establish a project, and I'm gonna call this Hello World. That's the name of our project. And I'm going to say, we're going to use languages CXX. Now, what this section here is technically optional, but uh, I think it's always good to say what languages you're going to use because that'll invalidate which compiler CMake's going to go look look for. Um, but hey, we got a project. And then our last thing is we're going to actually create our executable, which is add executable. So you could just say hello world which that's fine. Uh, and we can add our main.cpp because we are, uh, this CMake list is in the same directory with main.cpp. So we can just say that right there. And this is it. We now have ourselves a minimum CMake list to use. Uh, we'll talk through some of this in a bit, but if I move over here, um, let's create a build directory. And already some of you might be like a build directory. What is that? CMake, um, it, it, if, if we go ahead and run CMake, on the directory with the CMake list, which is one up from, from here. Uh, then we take a look at what it generated. It generated lots of things. Uh, and so one great thing about CMake is you can completely separate your build from your source. So you won't do things like accidentally commit build scripts that are not portable, uh, especially like binary files when you go and actually compile this. Um, like I can just do that right here and all the stuff uh, like, like there, that's the executable. Hello world. You just run it. Hey, runs. Hello world. Uh, the thing here is all of this stuff. If I wanted to start with a fresh build, I can just remove it. 
and I don't have to worry about knocking out my source files that are up here. Uh, now, interestingly, this is a common pattern with CMake is people create a build directory in their source tree. I am a really big fan of having a completely separate build tree. Um, that So if you see, I have, I have home, uh, home source, and then home build. That means this is really just a bunch of build directories I have. So if I make one, I usually like to make one for each project and go in there. I can now do CMake on that source tree and build, compile, and they are, if I could blow away all of my build directories and not have harmed a single source directory. I think that's just a good habit to get into, but um, of course that's up to you. It's your machine, it's your setup, but CMake so lets you do this. So we've already blown through a couple of things. There are build directories, we have source directories. Uh, at the end of the day, the, the, this is what, this is all you need. So what are some cool things that I can show you with this? One is, uh, different UIs that CMake works with. Now, if you already have a CMake cache, which means you've run CMake once, you have a live build directory that's pointing to a, a source directory, um, you can now run CMake uh, and CMake, CCMake, CMake, uh, not cake, CMake GUI. You can, all, you can run all of these tools um, on the build directory itself. There's no need to, to go and provide the source to like you can, like there's nothing wrong with that, but um, CMake, once you've created a live build directory, prefers that you stay with one source directory, so you can't just swap that out. You have to start from scratch, which is fine. That's expected, because um, swapping that out and keeping that state in between builds live, but you're pointing to different source trees, be crazy. Um, it's already hard enough to do that within one C++ project. So anyway, uh, all this to say that there's two UIs that CMake um, ships with that are really useful. One CC make, uh, which it's entirely curses based. So it's, you can use it entirely from your terminal. Um, and you know, you can configure and generate, which is interesting because when you run to CMake manually, the configure and generation phase are done both automatically. Um, so what, what this is, is if I were to go in and there are all these cache variables that we could, you know, turn on and off, Configure says we're going to run CMake to make sure everything is prepped and then generate's gonna actually generate the build scripts that we're gonna use to invoke. Um, you know, that that just know that that phase is different. So then if we, if we run CMake GUI, which is a, a cute version of the UI, um, it's just all the same stuff, but in a in a clickable mouse, mouse clickable interface. That has some nice things. Um, you should check out if you use CMake GUI, um, the grouped and advanced checks. Uh, grouped will say if you have a bunch of CMake cache variables um, from your project that share a prefix, uh, grouped will will put them together. So if I were to like if I were to head over to a more non-trivial project, CMake GUI, um, if I ungroup, there's just stuff everywhere. And if I hit grouped, it's nice that I can see all the Osprey options, all the TBB options, all the G-test options, et cetera. Uh, and then advanced, um, that'll be a topic that we talk about later. You can uh, you can put things advanced or non-advanced. So I think it's really good to first see what is not advanced options. And then advanced, of course, like your, your developer of your project, you or someone else, uh, their code that they're making, that you're building, Snow advanced probably means you really know what you're doing. But again, it's your CMake to decide what to do. We can do more. Let's change generator. So let's let's blow away this build. Uh, and let's say um, we're gonna run CMake, but we're gonna use Ninja. What's really cool is now this one CMake list now lets me run Ninja to build, and Ninja's really fast. Um, by default on, on Linux and Mac, you get Unix make files. So just type make. That's why probably in most uh, readmes of projects, it's just run CMake and make because by default you get Unix make files. Um, then on Windows, there's different Visual Studio generators. Uh, I'm not a Windows developer much, so I <laughs> set it up in my continuous integration for projects that I work on and then kind of forget about it because I tend to work on Linux. but. At the end of the day, it's the same thing. You run CMake on a directory, 
get all this stuff, and then you build, and there you go. Last tip, um, we're gonna do this again. Now, let's say you're in a, a build script or you never wanna think about which generator you chose when you first ran CMake. Uh, I can say run Ninja here, but I wanna be able to just have, cause right now CMake knows what build system you chose. What build, it, it knows that Ninja is the target. So what CMake comes with is CMake dash dash build. If you run that on your build directory, uh, it will invoke the underlying build system that you generated for uh, in, in a generic way. So you could say CMake dash dash, we remove all this um, and run CMake on this. Now this is Unix make files. If I do CMake dash dash build, now I get the equivalent of, of make. It's probably enough for today's video. Getting familiar with source directories and build directories, a minimal CMake list, as well as familiarity with some UI tools like CCMake and CMake GUI would be a good start. Coming up next, we're going to look at some basic CMake language topics, such as syntax and strings and lists and variables and control flow. Let me know in the comments down below if these are things you're interested in to make sure that these videos are helping you with what you face in your CMake. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And until next time, happy coding, everyone.